Hey, Miguel. How's Florida? right now, but if you care to leave your name and number... psychology department. Uh, Dr. John Cornelius? Come in, doors open. Dr. Cornelius? That depends. Excuse me? Come in. Uh, Jacoby. Uh, John Jacoby? I uh, spoke to someone on the faculty. I believe you're expecting me. I'm... The Chief Executive Officer dreams in magic. Advanced computer simulation and artificial intelligence. How do you do? Come sit down. Here. So, virtual reality is your major project. And you believe that your company could become the victim of industrial espionage, yes? Got it in one. Television is going to become old hat. Instead of watching things from the outside, you're going to put us on the inside of the box, is that right? Well, I guess so, in a, in a way. Well, if you can help me get... This little man, from level four to level five, I'll be eternally grateful. I'd rather you 
found the Judas that's trying to rip off the company. Yam says that he has definite proof that someone has been found. Who's Yam? Uh, one of my partners, uh, Yam Yamazaki. He's major league in laser physics. He's the one that first heard the nasty buzz in the States. Game over. Game over. Game over. <sighs> Red eyes, dandruff. This is definitely a Kodak moment, mm. JC. Samantha. <clears throat> Don't you think our relationship has reached a stage where I might have a key to the front door? Oh, it's much more exciting this way. Your trouble is you don't want to be connubially pinned. <laughs> mm. Oh, my God. I'm late. The alarm didn't go off. <laughs> this is a 12-hour clock, JC. A.M. P.M. Angel. It's set to give you a rude awakening at 8 o'clock tonight. I'll buy you a good one, nude boy. I do not accept presents from young women who break into my rooms. What's the rush? You don't have to be at the university today. I thought we could... You can do. I've got an appointment with somebody in computers. Is this one of these extracurricular jobs you never tell me about? Why are men so noisy in the morning? It's ten o'clock. Where's the big cheese? You usually set your clock by John Jacoby. Yeah, well, he has got a count his paper clips, hasn't he? Administration. <laughs> Sorry, I'm late. Where's he at? Thought he was at NASA. Well, he was, but he was flying back last night. Bet he's off to enjoying some sushi. Do you know what I mean? Something raw and pink. <laughs> I wonder if you'll still be smiling when I tell you that one of us is planning to sell Medusa to the highest bidder. Well, I don't believe it. I would be committing commercial suicide. Medusa is the company, it's us. So who'd be stupid enough to do that? Someone who needs money. Christ, if I find out who the brownie is, I'll personally mash the bastard. Oh, by sitting on them, I suppose. Yes, we just can't sit on our bow hung, sweating for Medusa to fly out of the window. Now, this maniac has got to be found. Now. I agree. That's why I've called someone in, privately. You did what? Since when do you make decisions without us taking a vote? I don't want some dick poking his nose into Medusa. Isn't this a matter for the police? No crime has been committed, remember? Yet. Look, this man has a reputation of being very discreet. For the sake of Humbert J. Humbert! My name is Cornelius, Dr. John Cornelius. I'm sorry, Squire. Orders is orders. If you had an appointment, you'd be down here. And you ain't. Ah, Mr. Jacoby, Secretary. Oh, I would love to come up. Perhaps you would like to have a word with Neanderthal man here. The background of the company is fairly simple. Uh, myself, Matt Andres, and Yami Yamazaki were working for an American firm called Images. We uh, had a disagreement with the management, so I got some funding. Then Reggie Milsom and Annie Piper joined the team. Then finally, Liang Ti came on board with Hong Kong money. The sum total of their brains equals technological dynamite. You know, Reggie Milsom says that one day he'll write a program that'll let you trade your identity with a lobster. Piper, Matt Andres, and uh, Reggie Milson. 
This is uh, Dr. John Cornelius, the uh, psychological consultant I told you about. Yeah, no offense, but I believe we should have sorted this out ourselves. Maybe you've got something to hide, Reggie. But on second thoughts. Hello, Liang T. We've got a visitor. You're very special, Doctor. You're the only person besides ourselves who has ever been in this room. I'm honored. And this is why we call it Medusa, Doctor. This is Liang T. Dr. Cornelius? Forgive me, Doctor. After a while, you forget you're wearing the data glove. Data glove? This is the brain of the virtual reality system. Why don't you let him play down the amusement arcade? We own the patents on some video games. At least we'll get some royalties from the man, lighten his fee. Well, we can tell you one thing, Doctor. Now, you see, the old way was to have two TV mini screens actually inside the helmet you looked at. You saw things in a kind of um, 3D. Great for the kids, but lousy for super graphics. Now, our lady Medusa, why well, she changes all of that? Well, that's when lasers come in. Instead of seeing the image on TV screens, we put the image on your retina using a laser. Jesus Christ, why don't you just give them the schematics? The whole shebang. Then they can go and sell it as well. Oh, pipe down, Reggie. You play video games, Doctor? Well, my work at the university... Well, let's just say that I keep my joystick handy. How about role-playing adventures? Well, isn't that what we're doing here? Careful now, Doctor. That symbol signifies a laser. And seeing that everything in here is experimental, we don't want you losing a little finger, do we? Play bells ring, are you listening? In the lane, snow is glistening. A beautiful sight, we're happy tonight. Walking in the winter wonderland. Gone away is the bluebird, here to stay is a new bird. He sings a love song as we go along. Walking in the winter wonderland. Jardine Matheson. These people of yours might be computer brains, but they can't spell. What? If someone works for a company, they ought to spell it properly. And when people talk to people, they ought to answer back. What? A bloody German car in my bloody space. Some flaming frau from the bar of mine off gang, I shouldn't wonder. Damn Scotsman took a fiver off me the other day, said that he could switch the liquid from one glass to the other without touching the glasses. Really? First year science. Oh, what is this? College disinfectant. Where did you get it? Well, the local supermarket, of course. Oh, you're quite hopeless, JC. I shall have my wine merchant send you a couple of cases of Macallans. Uh, excuse me. Excuse me. I don't care if this was made in North Korea and bottled in a sewage factory. This is what I buy and it's what I drink. Now, just tear that up. If you must be masterful. Oh. Mm. Drink on women, Cornelius, and both before 10.30 in the bloody morning. Still, if you're making the offer, down the flaming hatch. Bloody hell. What's that? The college disinfectant? <laughs> now, before I forget, John Nam um, Jacoby. Oh, it's all in hand, Aaron. Bloody good job as well, because I'm very pissed off with you, Cornelius. Sexual encounters? Is that all you can say? Well, it's 
been a very irrational day. What is everybody going on about? Pouring, beloved, filthy pictures to warm the cockles. Oh, come on, JC. Your fleshy foibles are safe with me. Oh, no, you, you know what that's about, don't you? Yeah. I've just told you, slap in the mouth stuff. Well, uh, uh, no, uh, in, uh, yes, well, in a way, it's part of a programme I'm involved in with a government committee. I'm supposed to give my opinion about certain erotic films and the effect they have on people with certain sexual problems. Then maybe you can help me, Doctor. I have a very serious sexual problem. There's this man who refuses to take me seriously, but has no shame about letting me jump on his bones. Can't you tell me over the phone? Okay, I'll be right up. Thank you. Look, this is very embarrassing, but it seems that the taxi driver would like to be paid right here and now. The only problem is, he doesn't seem to want to let me far from his sight. And I've told him I can get the money from somebody here at the hotel. If there's any problem, I'll be in the penthouse suite. Miss Valentine. Oh, just a second. John Jacoby, I'm out of the office right now, but if you care to leave your name and number, I'll get right back to you. Please wait for the tone. This is Sergeant Gummer from Inspector Cadogan's office. We'd appreciate it if you gave us a call as soon as possible. The number is... Well, actually, Miss Valentine, uh, it was him. Don't worry, Albert. Actually, he's an eccentric piano tuner. No, I'm not. I'm a distinguished lecturer in psychology. See what I mean? Eccentric. With grand ideas. I promised an old school chum we'd have a drink with her before the concert. Got to show her my latest notch on the bedpost. Know what I mean, darling? There's something I'd like to do first. Gee, see, we're already late. Let me take a second to go there. Hi. This is John. Can you hear me? I'll be right with you.
got me here. What's so all fired important that needs all the secrecy? Valentine, I'm answering an emergency call. You got a call to come here, Doctor? But isn't this just the kind of place to get a heart attack? Just a second. Haven't you forgotten something? Your bag? <sighs> you betcha. In a neighborhood like this. Would you mind awfully? Minding the car, that is. Destroy three enemies. <laughs> what the? If you can't beat them, join them. What do you think you're doing? It's a double game, remember? Anyone can join in. <laughs> Emergency. Em Congratulations, you achieved cadet level. Experience over. Oh, don't be such a sore loser, JC. No, it's not that. Just that I can't cheat. I don't have time to explain, beloved. <gasps> Do help me, officer. I have to get him to intensive care. We can't wait for an ambulance. I'll get you there, Doc. Fast. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. Before we examine the question, why do some people in certain circumstances commit serious acts of violence, I'd like to thank the chemistry department for the use of the zinc bath and the art department for the services of Miss Miniver. All right. Whose car is that? It's a police car. A police car, I know. I'd be a damn sight better off renting out the bloody space. It's an Inspector Cadogan. Well, where the blazes is he? He came to see Dr Cornelius. Dr Cornelius is in the Brabant Lecture Hall. I sent the inspector there. That all right? Uh, our example for analysis today is the Brides in the Bath murderer, George Smith. We'll discuss such psychometric measures as psychoticism, dominance and hostility later. But Smith's case was an intriguing one. For the first part of his career, he married lonely ladies, fleeced them of their money, and then vanished from their lives. But quite suddenly, he changed his modus operandi. And he began to murder his victims instead, by drowning them in the bath. 
but in such a way as to baffle <coughs> forensic science. Just push their heads under. No problem. Or yank them by their feet. Ah. Mr. Gunning. But they would struggle. They would fight. The bodies would give the game away. It's called bruising. And none of the corpses showed the slightest signs of violence. I think you took the wrong turn back there, Sergeant. With respect, sir, I think you'll find it's just round a bend. Along with a bleach, eh, Sergeant? <laughs> God, it's a joke! Don't you chaps in the service have any sense of humour nowadays? Not on what they pay us, sir. To find out how Smith drowned his victims and left not a mark on them, Forensic conducted a number of experiments with the use of a young lady, which brings us to Miss Miniver, who has kindly agreed to help us re-enact those forensic experiments. Miss Miniver. <laughs> Uh, Miss uh, Miniver poses for the art department. Uh, a job's a job, Lovey. Uh, yes, that's John Jacoby. I would have thought you'd been used to cadavers by now, Doctor, and would have commented on this one's funny eyes. Funny eyes? Interesting, isn't it? I have to warn you that the other one's a lot worse. Other one. Been in the water some time, you see. We believe it's a Mr. Yamazaki. I say believe because his face is a bit of a mess. Not a pretty picture. An associate of Jacoby. Do you know? I never met Mr. Yamazaki. Well, there's not much point in looking at what's left then, is there, sir? Did you say Mr. Jacoby died in a car crash? Yes. Of course, the autopsy will give us the full cause of death, but we believe your friend Jacoby probably died of a heart attack. Possibly a stroke, brain hemorrhage, drove off the road. I'd like to see the report immediately you get it, Inspector. Why should I do that, sir? Well, surely you brought me here for my expert opinion. Good Lord, no, sir. Now, your card was found on the gent's body, sir. Were you treating him for something psychological? Was he having mental problems? Ah! Ah! Beer! Just the man I'm looking for! Bugger off, Cornelius! Running time is precious time. I'm on my tod. So be a sensitive bastard for once in your life and push off. I need the answer to something, Pia. Then go watch Mastermind. Christ, you got a nerve after the last time dragging me into that court. Well, the defence needed an expert witness. It wasn't too expensive. Thought you'd enjoy it. Enjoy it? Copulation of sexual deviation. My wife and mother were in that court. Well, perhaps you're not the man who can answer my question. I'll go and ask your colleague Henderson. Perhaps he'll know. Henderson? What the hell does Henderson know except the textbook he boned up on the night before? Surely being a bit unfair there, Veer. You weevil. You lie on the ground there and tell me you can get information from Henderson that I'm unable to furnish? What's the question? Damn it. What's the question? My question has to do with the human eye. And do you think Henderson can give you information that I can't? What can make the eye of a corpse turn completely black? When any of the information on the program gets changed, regardless of how insignificant, it gets logged, dated, and timestamped. So how do you know it was Jacoby who changed the program? Well, the colour of the sky. Well, we all have our own little idiosyncrasies. One of Jacoby's was the fondness of the colour magenta. So he was definitely here in the lab on the night that he died, hmm? There's more. I, mean, I would have noticed it ordinarily, but 
what's been going on right now. Can you roll back? Well, according to the log, Yamazaki was the one who left these funny little squiggles. Yes. Can, can you freeze frame it? Sure. Mm. It's a bit like an A, doesn't it? Yeah. A for Andrews or, or Annie. Any Piper? Yeah, well, whatever. Listen, I have to get back to take a class. But can I ask you not to tell anyone about any of this? Are you crazy? Well, what's been going on round here? Why do you think I phoned you in the first place? If one of those are... Ah, Miss Piper. <laughs> Thank you, Reggie. <laughs> Most useful. Thick as thieves now, are we? I don't know what you're talking about. Were you and our psychologist doctor trading secrets? Secrets? I thought you didn't like secrets, Reggie. Well, I think we'd all better be careful what we say to one another in future. Maybe that's what got Yamazaki and Jacoby killed in the first place. Yeah, so maybe the fat man has got a point. Hmm. The question is... Did our thief turn to murder, like the brides in the bath case, as a means to an end, using a technique which leaves not a visible signs of violence on the victim anywhere? Uh. The other question is, did they die in the Medusa room? Liang Ti, a games player. Impulsive, perhaps, with an inscrutable internal control. Andres, extrovert, arrogant, authoritarian, but with indications of low self-esteem. And Miss Piper, Annie, touch neurotic, with paranoid ideation, perhaps. Hmm. And, God help us, Reggie. Abstracted and hyperactive. It's staring me in the face. I know it. A for Andres. A for Annie. But not for Liang T or Reggie Milson. Was going through Yamazaki's brain at the time. Of course, something not English, something Japanese. Wilbur, old chum, I bring you a foaming tankard of. Barley, hops, and yeast. A pint of beer would have done. You realize, Cornelius, that if certain people see me in your company, I have as much chance of being elected next week as a hedgehog of crossing the M1. Oh, surely not. Well, I suppose the quicker I do you a favor, the faster I'll see the back of you. Oh, can't one spend a quiet moment with an old friend? No. And not so much of the old, and even less of the friend, if you don't mind. Well, come on, come on, spit it out. Uh, Wilbur, it's a well-known fact that you are one of the foremost Sino-Japanese experts in this country. One? Mm. And who else is there? Does this mean anything to you? Apart from being a scribble, you mean? Oh, well, I copied it down. It's written by a Japanese person. Well, you haven't copied it very well, and it's hardly worthy of my attention. Uh, Wilbur, would you like me canvassing at your next election? Oh, God, anything but that. If you must know, it's a character which represents the moon. The moon? That's what I believe I said. Oh. I was hoping you'd tell me something a little more helpful. Well, think yourself lucky I didn't tell you in Japanese or Chinese. Anyway, that's all I'm going to say for the price of a beer. Uh, just a minute. What would you have said? Expanding your knowledge base at last, Cornelius. The word for moon in Chinese is Liang. Just the man I wanted to see. I need to ask a question. Not now, Veer. I'm in a hurry. I needed to ask if that corpse of yours ever messed around with lasers. Very likely. Well, 
next time, damn well, go and see Henderson. Ah, oh, sir. Ah, Gunning, uh, have you got wheels? Yeah, but... Great, because I need a lift urgently. That'll be difficult on a mountain bike. Yeah. Right. Phone Miss Samantha Valentine and tell her I need the Mean Machine cab service pronto. You got that? Yeah, but I wanted to know if... Now, go find the phone box. It's a matter of life or death, Gunning. Life or death. But your lecture on George Smith. Yes, I need to know. Of... Go, Gunning. Yes, can I speak to Reggie Milson, please? Ah. Reggie? Yes, John Cornelius here. Are you all right? No, it's just that you sound a bit strange. Listen, Reggie, I have to come over and see you immediately. Can you wait there for me? And don't tell anybody about this, you understand? And can you make sure that my name is on the list at reception? Good. Well, do as the man says, Reggie. Ring reception. You're a beast. You tell me nothing. It's all top secret, Sam. Hmm. Just like our love life. Ah! You are always destined for the low life, Reggie. <gasps> ah! Ah! Dr. Cornelius, right? You ought to go straight up to the Medusa room, sir. Hey, 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 just a minute, young lady. I've only got Dr. Cornelius down on my list. That's OK, I'm his mistress. If his name is down on the list, that's good enough for me. You're not supposed to be with me. Illogical, JC. I am with you. I don't like this. Where's Reggie? Perhaps he's having a lie down. Do you know what you're doing, JC? No, not really. But I've watched Star Trek for years. I'm an original Trekkie. Listen, I want you out of here. This is not the sort of game I want you mixed up with. The person I'm waiting for plays deadly games. Two to one are much better odds. Well, if you really want to help me, why don't you pick up that phone there? Call Inspector Cadogan. Dial police. Really, gosh. And what shall I tell you? That my lover and I have broken into a secret establishment. And that said lover is monkeying with things he shouldn't. Sam? Come and help me with this glove. Oh, hello. Uh, can you hold on for a second? Idiot in there?
virtual reality, Dr. Cornelius. I knew you wouldn't be able to resist it. Your disappointment the other day was quite obvious. One doesn't need to be a psychologist to figure that out. Sam! What have you done with Sam? Sam! Where's Sam? You're locked in, Doctor. Wait! I think I ought to warn you about something. You have nothing to tell me. Humor me. It's all done with lasers, yes? Very good. But you'll never see the laser that penetrates your brain. Listen, I might have switched the connections on these machines. You're probably a poor bluffer at poker, Dr. Cornelius. No! Somewhere on the side of the helmet. Do you see it? Yeah, I've got it. Ah. Saying? Um, uh, someone motivated and merciless. Oh, someone motivated and merciless, yes. A foreign agent would have known what to have done with Medusa. My guess is that she was working for the Chinese. North Korea? Yes, quite possibly. No, it's an anagram of errant hook. Well, whatever. I think she had a forged Hong Kong identity, but believe you me, if she ever had worked for Jardine Matheson... She'd have known how to spell it. She'd have known how to spell it. Hello? Yes. Yes, it is Samantha Valentine speaking. Hold on. It's for you. Oh. Yes, hello. Uh, it's one of my students. Ah, Gunning. Mm. How did the brides in the bath murderer do it? Uh, Gunning, I take it this is for research purposes alone. Well, if you must know, he grabbed them under the knees, thereby forcing water into their lungs and rendering them unconscious. Hmm. Good night, Gunning. Just a minute. How did he know your name? I'd be more upset if he'd mentioned someone else's name. <laughs> oh. oh, lordy, what... Is this JC? What's one? Oh. oh, goodness me. <sighs> bed's wet. What? The bed's wet. Just <sighs> as long as it's your side of the bed, sweetie. Okay, but 